-hmm. They don't need to know how I injured my eye. They don't <laughs> They actually don't. They That's don't. right. They, just, they already see that it's injured. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't need to know. It's pretty clear. Yeah. So you got hit by a golf ball. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on the ninth hole. <laughs> you can see he the shanked ear. the ball. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that happened to my son, by the way. Did it? He went to the putt-putt, decided to hit the ball <laughs> full ball. speed. The ball hit the wall, ricocheted back into his eye. He had this big, big black oh, eye. Oh, I bet you that hurt. It did hurt. Oh, my God. My oh, it did hurt well, My ex-boyfriend got hit in, the, hit in the head by a drive, and he just down. Hi. This is Unlimited Access. My name is Levi. I'm Shannon. Hi. So, um... Wow, yeah, people, and caring for people, and I think that somewhere in this mission statement that you're working on, I could see that being in there, and I know you've got a draft, and we're not going to talk about the mission statement, but here at Ursaman, we believe that people, humans, uh, <laughs> make, not, dogs. not dogs. People want me to develop it for the vets, by the way. Yeah, okay. I think if we can do um, Ursaman vet, I vet, I... Oh, yeah, uh, Ursaman v Ursaman. Vet. No, don't call it VS for me. Somebody called our one of our products V spotted. <laughs> Ruckus was so bad. Um, yeah, Ursaman vet, like a little vet on the side. No, I have had vets. They're like they really want. They're like, can you do that for us? Because it's really this will kind of go back to the story about making providers' lives easier mm. as well. How do we bring those patients and providers together? Well, um, we just believe people can make better health decisions when they have access to that, and whether it's the the patient themselves or the physician or the caregiver or the nurse, anybody in that role, if they mm -hmm. have access to it all. And um, we're just trying to put it all in one place. So um, yeah. I sent you an article mm -hmm. that I found interesting, and we're not going to talk about the whole article, but yeah. uh, you can find it out on uh, walterscooler.com. I think it's Clu Kluwer. 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 Walters Kluwer. Very uh, German sounding is what Literally it says. we don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who they are. But it was really, they talked about optimizing clinical workflows. Yeah. All right, and let me just read a quick little bit from it here, and then. Well, they talked about six challenges. Six delivering challenges. quality healthcare. We're zeroing right. in on the on, clinical workflows because yeah. that's our kind of our pivot right now. Right. So there was lack of interoperability and personnel shortages and burnout and some other things. But mm -hmm. let's talk about optimizing clinical workflows. Specifically, says clinicians and staff need access to actionable information. Mm -hmm. at the point of care and uh, workflows are not optimized. And so the example that you gave me was the ER doctor. I go in to see the ER doctor and the ER doctor starts asking me questions in this very uh, researchy kind of way, trying to understand everything. And because I don't know what they're looking for, I give them everything. And everything yeah. is not what they really want. They just yes. need specific things. And those three specific yeah. things were, I can't remember, but they were there. So let's kind of talk about that. What are those things that an ER doctor needs and how can potentially we provide it? Let's talk about optimizing workflows. What are those three things that you said the ER doctors need? Do you remember? Code status, medications, and allergies. That's right. They don't First thing. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know how I injured my eye. They, don't <laughs> they actually don't. They That's don't. right. They, just, they already see that it's injured. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they don't need to know. It's pretty clear. Yeah. So you got hit by a golf ball. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on the ninth hole. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see he the shanked ear. the ball. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that happened to my son, by the way. Did it? He went to the putt-putt, decided to hit the ball <laughs> full ball. speed. The ball hit the wall, ricocheted back into his eye. He had this big, <gasps> oh. big black eye. Oh, I bet you that hurt. It did hurt. Oh, my God. My well, ex-boyfriend well, ex got hit in, the, hit in the head by a drive, and he just down. Down. down, man, yeah. Yeah, and my son was, uh, you know, a thousand miles away when it happened, too, so I just see a picture of him on the Internet with oh, a big black eye. Oh, you weren't even there. Yeah, kids, kids get injured all the time. They're, they're resilient. So, but uh, de the doctors at the ER don't need that funny story background. They just need code. Code status, medications, and allergies. Medications and well, allergies. Well, the first thing that they need. So, yeah. So, one of the big things we learned, and like we said, there's like six topics. Whoops. Six topics um, in this article. But one of the things we haven't talked about is optimizing clinical workflows. And what does that mean to the layman? Is that the word I use? Uh, to you and me. Why, do, why is that important? Um, they don't need all information because every doctor has to go through a process. Medicine is a, is a science and it's an art and it's based on experience and, and you're, you're trying to process of eliminate things. Um, and so each doctor, and this is what we learned from our uh, new advisor, ER doctor, and she said, listen, she goes, every doctor has a clinical note and it starts a certain way and there are certain things that you have to know how to treat that person the minute you walk in the door and what you get is, hey, let me tell you about my 15 years of health history. 
you're trying to you feel like you're trying to help the doctor because they don't have because they can't find the information they really need three things from the get-go to know how to deal with you in what what priority you get code status which is your most form and we have actually posted on our resource page what's a most post it's basically your directives what do you want them to do if you're non-conscious if you're older and you're like hey listen i'm <laughs> i'm kicking the bucket dnr do not take care of me do you want feeding and tubing do you want this if you don't have that and it's just a piece of paper every state has their own version but it all has the same information on it what how do you want to be treated when you're in once they know that they're like okay got it i know how to act quick next is medications and allergies because they want to act quick usually it's an emergency so they're saving your life or they're trying to get things into control and those two things are to make sure that what they do do for you they don't contradict something or they don't give you and so all those horror stories that you want to tell your doctor oh this doctor screwed me up or that doctor usually it's because they didn't have the information to know so it's really important they get those just those three things right off the bat so they can take quick action there's another level of it but well, this this thing is is we're talking about the ER doctor, you know, in this scenario, but it's not unique to the ER doctor. It's 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 every time you go see a, a doctor. physician. Yeah, right? they just each have a different thing that they need to see what your status. So we are also talking to a kidney nephrologist doctor, and he's like, these are the first things I need to see when you walk in, so I understand your status. Where were you over the last three months? So I learned this because we talked to a company about how do you identify the most critical information first. So now we mentioned earlier on doctors don't want all information that's not helpful if you have a kidney problem they don't need what you ate yesterday or maybe they do right they need bun and creatinine and some other things that tell me how you are doing today and how you've been doing over the last month so they can kind of take off from there so each doctor has their own view that they need to level set you and then they'll start to ask you backwards in history to what's relevant. That's why throwing a bunch of information is as bad as them looking at their system because the way their system does it, it's fragmented information, it's all over the place. And so helping guide that conversation and really just answering the questions they ask you as fast as possible right. is gonna help them serve you better. Right, and I think it's kind of funny because we think about doctors and one of the, the things that um, help people heal, right, is bedside manner right? yeah and so there's this thing where a person like me a talkative person right mm -hmm. i want to get to know the doctor right yeah like i want to and um and going back to the er but any doctor you know there's this like camaraderie that kind of has to yes. happen yes and especially when they call you the warden of your father <laughs> <laughs> always camaraderie <laughs> always camaraderie yet that can be distraction so you can imagine a scenario right and this is where our app comes in is like i can I, I envision the scenario of me handing the phone to the doctor. Yeah. And them saying, well, I'm a primary care doctor. Click the button, and here's the things that the primary care doctor might need. All the while, while they're looking and reading at that, I'm just going, well, here's what I ate for lunch yesterday. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Noise. Noise. They, Alert fatigue is what they're calling it. Right. But at least they're getting the information that they need quickly and we can maybe spend more time on camaraderie slash bedside Correct. manner or they can move on to the next patient or whatever it is that you got necessarily it. need to be yeah. the faster you can get them to the information the more time so again our video if you have 11 minutes or 16 minutes it's debate they have to spend so much time you lose so it's not the bedside manner that it's not that they aren't great people they yeah. probably are but you would never know because they're spending too much time and one thing that our doctor said she's like I get interrupted so many times that I can't I have to keep restarting to try and find the data. So she, if you do it logically, you don't have to keep restarting. It's just there and you keep going. If it's all over the place, you have to literally keep backtracking and they can't ever do any. They're like, listen, and then you're adding in noise and they're like, hold on. <laughs> I can't give you bedside manner and I can't be a kind person. And we all know, you know, if you're in the ER, you're probably scared. You want some comfort that that doctor knows what they're doing. You want... You gotta help them because they're dealing with you know systems that quite frankly were built for patient safety but really prevent a lot of quick and easier processes by the doctors the um i'm thinking about another scenario that's totally different because you know i'm in the world of creating content and stuff like that mm -hmm. but there's like blog articles right and let's say you write a thousand word blog article and people 99% of the people won't read a thousand words, right? Correct. Um, but if we were to put at the very top of the blog, there's a title, 
and yeah. there's a lot of information that's communicated in that. Then there's typically like a uh, maybe a section like what you need to know, like let's say a three or four bullets about the blog article, mm-hmm. so people can summarize. Do that you want to read more? Right, and then there's like a first first paragraph, which kind of like sets the tone and explains here's what you're going to read about. So I think, and depending on how deep you want to dive into yes. it, and I can see our app doing something like this: er button, big red button, boom boom, and it's like one two three things. <laughs> You yeah. Know? yeah. It's like, do you want to dive deeper? Click here. Do you want to dive deeper? Yeah. Click. And they can they can go down those rabbit yes. holes and they can dive as deep as they need. All the while, I'll be there going, yeah. So, I was on the ninth hole. <laughs> and, going, and you can keep going, doing uh-huh, that. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And they're like, man, Let's get Mr. Spires. It, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you did still make a birdie though, correct? You did. did. <laughs> they'd be like, listen, I golfed that course last week. They can have that conversation because they can keep looking and they know instead of it taking. 16 minutes to try and get to what they need it'll take them five and they can they can spare a few minutes to talk about that birdie. maybe even like not even five minutes i could see this happening fairly quickly fast really fast it's really fast like one of the things she suggested i love i love what these guys are coming up with the doctors she's like listen if if you see she goes it'd be great if you saw like a if you see like okay this particular number was up if you can like hover over it and up pops exactly why that happened because then you, like you say then you can quickly scan through it and go oh yeah that was nothing move on or oh that was pretty important in your history so yeah it's all like it's like the book i think you're doing it too it's a choose your own adventure book right. by doctor right is your adventure is my adventure happens to be with the kidney section the challenge for the er and this is another thing we were thinking about the challenge for the er is they're dealing with all diseases so right. they have to try and very quickly get through the most logical way to find out what's going on with you in what part of your system. And it's, it is, it's information overload. Unlike if you are in fact, just a specialist, it's not to say that you don't still have a lot of information, right. but you're dealing with one body part and you can go from there. The ER has got to go. Okay. What's the first thing about you that I have to worry about? You're a diabetic and you're a kidney. Well, I'm going to go down that trail. Well, we should, uh, we should create a show. Let's call it ER. I know there's a guy named George Clooney. ER. He's really good looking. And he solves all of these crazy problems. Imagine, right. like, yeah, like back in the day before they had the internet. That's basically ER. It is ER. <laughs> well, the and 90s. they said, and they said, I was just reading. They said House, the movie, the TV show House, oh, House actually yeah, got House. everything. They said it's the most accurate when it comes to how they do diagnostics and stuff. So A I love House. Uh, physician. Well, he is disgruntled, but he also teaches all these students on how to how to find the process. So if you watch that show, you'll see. People don't give information, too much information. He's obnoxious, but he's like, dude, stop telling me about your sandwich today. It was not your sandwich. But people are in that situation. They want to feel loved. Yeah. And that's the hard part is how do you balance that with medicine, which is really about getting to the science as fast as you can. Data and information. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you. Um, again, here at Ursaman, we believe people make better health decisions when they have all of that information, especially if it's right there at the fingertips. One, two, three, two, two, two. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.